Hi, um, today I'm going to show you how trace tables work and how to make a trace table for a for loop. So we've got a little program on the right. I'm showing you NetBeans on the right. And we've got public class for loops, public static void main, there's our main method. All we have is a little for loop that goes for int i equals one, semicolon, i less than or equal to three, semicolon i plus plus. So it's a loop that will repeat three times. And all we will do in the loop is print, we love IT. So when you make a trace table, I will show you on Excel because it's a nice, smart and easy way to do it. And so remember that you need to make a column for every variable in your program. So our first variable here is int i. We've got a little integer called i. So on the left, in my Excel spreadsheet, I will put I there, okay? That's our first column. Next column, when you're dealing with a for loop, you need to put the condition, the test. Remember, that's the middle part of your for loop. Is I less than or equal to three? As long as that condition is still fulfilled, the for loop keeps going. So we're gonna put it here, I less than or equal to three. Oops, and it changed my I to a capital. We don't want that. It's a small I. Remember, Java is case sensitive. And then I'm going to make my third column much bigger because whatever the output is, whatever screen output, system.output line, I will put in this last column. Okay. So we've got our three columns for, um, for, X, for our trace table. And now we're going to start from the top of the program. And as the variables change through the program, as we execute the program, I will show you how you fill them in the trace table. So we start at the top, right at the beginning. That is how program executes from top to bottom. The first thing that happens is I gets the value of one, I equals one. So we need to fill in at the top of the trace table, we put a little one there. Step two, the next thing that happens is the test in the for loop gets done. So is i less than or equal to three? Is that true or false? i is one, one is yes, one is less than or equal to three, so that is a true. We're gonna get a value of true there under the column i less than or equal to three. Okay, I don't know why Excel likes changing everything to capitals. I want that as a small, there we go, true. Remember, i++ doesn't happen at this stage. It only happens when we get to the bottom of the for loop and go back to the top. So right now we step into the for loop, whatever's between the two curly brackets gets executed or run or done. Okay, so the, the command is system.out.println, we love IT. And you know that that is output. So we get that in the output column. We love IT. Okay. And we'll just wait here in the Excel. We'll stay right there. So we have now reached the bottom of the for loop. We're at this little curly bracket at the bottom. And what happens now is because we're in a for loop, execution goes back to the top of the loop and this little I++ command is executed. So I is equal to I plus one. That's basically an incrementation command. We call that incrementation when we're adding one to a variable. Right, so I plus plus makes I was, I was one. Now one plus one is two, so I becomes two. So I need to fill that into the I, I column. I becomes two, so I've got a little two there. We've got the I plus plus has been executed. We now can run the test to see whether the for loop should carry on. So, is i still less than or equal to three? Well, we can see in our trace table that i is two. Yes, two is less than or equal to three. 
So we've still got a true there. We can fill that in. I less than or equal to three gives me a true. So I've filled a little true in. We can now step into the for loop. We will execute whatever's between the curly brackets. So that is the print command again, and we will print another. We love IT. That goes into the output um, column. So we'll type there, we love IT, and Excel fills it in for me. We're now ready to go to the next line of our trace table because we're at the bottom of the for loop. And again, we're at the bottom. So NetBeans knows or Java knows it must now go back to the top of the for loop and again run that little I plus plus at the end of the for loop line. So I goes from two to three and we can fill that in. Let's put it, fill in a little three there. We are going to run the test. Is I still less than or equal to three? I is now three. Is three less than or equal to three? Yes, it is. That is still true. So we get a true here. And we can now, um, let me just remove my annotations. We can now run the for loop again, run the whatever's between the curly brackets. So we get another system.out.print line. We love IT. So we fill that in. We love IT gets filled in there on our output com column. We're now ready to go back to the top of the for loop. So we've finished everything between the curly brackets. And again, we do I++. So I now becomes four from three to four. And again, we are going to do the test. Oops, let's just <laughs> um, clear all drawings rather. We are going to do the test again. Is I still less than or equal to three? So I is now four. Is four less than or equal to three? No, it's not. So we now get a false over here. The test becomes false. Once the test has become false, the for loop terminates. And it, the execution of the program jumps underneath the for loop, underneath the two curly brackets. And whatever, if there were more lines of code there, that would get executed. But we've actually reached the end of our program. That's the end of the main method. So we have now finished our program. And that's the end of the for loop, end of the program. And we've finished filling in our trace table. So here's our little trace table for this little command, for this little program. We've got another slightly more complicated program here, which we will also do. So let's do this one for loop two. Okay, we're going to start a new sheet. There. And let us fill this sheet in. And remember, we always start at the top of our program. And as we come across variables, whatever variables we find, here we've got number, we're going to fill that in as a column in our trace table. If you're working on paper, just draw a table and as you go, fill in the headings, the, the variables become the headings for your table. So we're going to put the number. That's our first variable. Second variable, you can see int i. Even though it's in a for loop, it's still a variable. It's called the loop control variable and it's an integer. So we have I over here. Next, this is not a variable, but we know that the condition, the test in the trace table always gets filled in as another column. So is I, mm, why does Excel always change my I's into capitals? Is I less than four? This time it's just less than, it's not less than or equal. And there you go. Remember, one more column for output, okay? 
and that's usually a wider column because output takes more space. So we've got our four columns this time and we're ready to start our trace table. Let's start at the top of the program. First line, number gets set to one. So we'll fill in a little one there. Next line, int i gets the value zero. So we'll fill in a little zero there. A test is the next thing to be done. Is i less than four? Well, i is currently zero and zero is less than four. So the test is true. Okay. Why did it put that in capitals? I want it in small letters. <laughs> Excel is not cooperating here. Okay, well, never mind. It will be in capitals. Well, let's try one more trick. Okay, there you go. Um, we next we go to the next line. Remember the first line, the first time you go into your for loop, the I++ does not operate. I++ only happens when you have finished the loop and you go back to the top. So our next command is system.out.println, the number is plus number. So that's output. We need to put it in the output column. The number is, and then Whatever the value of number is, that is what is being displayed. And now in the trace table, it's so easy because you just look at the most recent value for number. There it is, it's a one. So it's one, the number is one. We then go to the next line, number equals number plus one. So number gets one plus one, it gets the value two. And we get to the bottom of the for loop, so again, we are now going to jump back to the top and execute I++. So I gets the value 0 plus 1 and I becomes 1. Is, we do the, the next step is to do the test. It's just, we're now going to do the test. Is I still less than or equal to 4? And yes, one is less than, I mean, not less than or equal, just less than four. I is, one is less than four, so it is still true. Mm -hmm. okay. True. We are now ready to do the next step. System.out.println, the number is plus number. We type the number is. This time, the latest value for number over here on this line is two. So the number is two. And then we go to the next line, number equals number plus one. So number goes from two plus one is three. And we're now at the bottom of the loop, go back to the top we do I++. There's our column for I. So I was one. One plus one is now two. So that goes to two. We now execute the test. Is I less than four? I is two. Two is less than four. So that is true. And then we print. The number is plus number. Our latest value for number is three, so the number is three, is what we put in the output. We then do number equals number plus one, the so number goes to four. And then we go back to the top of the loop and execute I plus plus, so I goes from two to three. We then do the test. Is i less than 4? Yes, 3 is less than 4. So this is still true. And then we print the number is plus number. So the number is 4. Number equals number plus 1. Number goes from 4 to 5. We have now finished the for loop. So we go back to the top. 
and execute I++ again. I goes from 3 to 4. Do the test. Is I less than 4? Is 4 less than 4? No, it is not. So that becomes false. We now... Oh, Excel. All right. We now are ready to do our print statement. The number, oops, sorry, not going to do that. Once the for loop has become false, we are going to step over the for loop, down to under the for loop, and we are going to execute this command. System.out.println, the loop is finished. So that will be our output now. The loop is finished. Right, and there you go. Program now terminates and we have finished our trace table. So please practice your trace tables. Um, very important to know how to do them. They are often asked in exams, in the trick exams as well. So it's a very good skill to know. And thanks for watching. See you next time.